Cycle 3, Week 20, Hands-On Science, using the Foundations Guide. This is called Candy Probability. What is your favorite color of candy? Mine is red, always red. Red Skittles, red Jolly Ranchers, red, red, red. So if I have a roll of candy in my hands that has three white pieces, we're calling these white, and one red piece, what's the probability that I'll get my red that I really, really want? What's my probability? Let's remember our probability equation. Probability equals our desired outcomes, which in this case would be red candy, over our total number of outcomes, which would be the total numbers of pieces of candy in my hands. So we would have one, because I desire red, so the probability that I will get red is one over the total number of outcomes possible is four, because there's four pieces of candy, so it's one over four. What if I wanted an even chance of getting a red? What would we need to do? If I want an even chance, remember last week we talked about even chances? I would need to add two more reds to my roll of candies. Now, I have three whites and three reds. So now my probability I have three as the desired outcome, and the total outcomes is six, six pieces of candy. And for the big kids who know how to reduce a fraction, that's one over two, that's even odds. Three out of six, one, over, one out of two, that's even odds. That's how I'd give even odds. So if I had a big bag of candy and I wanted to know how many of our favorite color are in there, could we use what we know about probability to find out? Why don't we find out? Okay, so I've got lots of different <laughs> poker chips in here, okay? We're gonna pretend that they are candy. I'm not gonna tell you how many's in the bag of each color, but I will tell you that we have red, green, and white, okay? Let's make a chart because we are going to pass our bag of candy around the class and everybody's going to draw out of the bag over and over again and we're going to keep track of what color people are drawing out, okay? So if we have three colors, we've got white, red, and green. I'm just going to make um, tick marks in here, tally marks, as we keep track of how many we draw out of the bag, okay? So we're not going to look in the bag as we draw. We don't want to look because we want to make sure this, this experiment is um, done as perfectly as possible. So we don't want to look. We're going to shake it up, and we're going to draw out of the bag, okay? So you can pass this around and draw, but every time we draw one out, we're going to write and we're going to make a tick mark, okay? So red, we're passing it around. White, white, red, white, white, red, Red. When you guys have gone around the circle two times, let's stop, okay? But let's, so let's pretend and go a couple more times. Red. Okay, let's stop for a second. Just based on our results so far, what color candy do you think there are more of? Just based on what we have drawn out so far. So, so far we have 14 white, or sorry, nine whites, seven reds, and zero greens. Now, I showed you green. You know that there's green in the bag. 
but we have now drawn, a, um, let's see, 5, 10, and this is 4 more, that's 14, plus 2 is 16. So we drew 16 pieces of candy. And out of 16 pieces of candy, how many of them are white? Nine. How many of them are red? Seven. And how many of them are green so far? Zero. So your guess, I bet, is that there are more whites than anything and, and less and the least amount of green in the whole bag. Let's go around some more. Let's keep passing the bag and see if our, um, uh, sorry, if our uh, hypothesis uh, stays true. Sorry, I pulled out more than one. There are 100 pieces of candy in here, okay? White. And we're going to see if we can decide how many exactly of each there are. What we are creating here is actually a sample. Green! We're actually creating a sample because we are not going to pass this bag 100 times. Nope. Don't have time for that, right? So we're just going to pull a sample, and we're going to use that sample to get a fairly accurate estimate of how many of each color are in the bag. Let's go just a few more times. Oops, I've got a four right there, and I need to make it a... I should have done a five. This is going to be our last draw, okay? White. Okay, so now let's retally, okay, and see how many we have. Let's see how many draws we did total. Um, if you were doing it in your class, you probably went around an even number of times, and you can do the math a little quicker, but I'm going to count. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and then here's five more, so 35, 36. So we drew 36 times. So that's our total number of outcomes, right? And now we want to know how many whites did we draw. In 36 draws, how many whites did we pull? We pulled 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay? And how many reds did we pull? 5, 10, 11. How many greens did we pull? 5, 6, 7. Now, an adult can use a calculator to quickly tell you what percentage that is. So 18 over 36 is actually 50%. So 50% of our sample size of what we pulled was white. 50% was white. Let's see what fraction or what um, percentage 11 divided by 36 is approximately 31%. Okay, 31%. And let's see what 7 divided by 36 is 19%. 19%. Okay. I'm trying to decide if I should tell you or if we should keep pulling. So if you're the adult guiding this, if these numbers are still pretty far off from accurate, um you might want to keep going. But if they're fairly close, you could reveal the correct amount, or you could see how much time you have or see what the kids want to do, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and reveal what the truth was. But like I said, we are actually a little bit far off on some of these numbers, still not terribly, but a little bit. So if I had more time, I would keep going. I would keep pulling, uh, maybe till I got to 50 pulls, 
and then see if it got a little bit more accurate. But it um, can have to do with time, have to do with how the kid's attention is going. You make that choice. So the real number, are you ready to find out how many whites were in the bag? So our guess is that there were 50 whites in the bag because when we pulled out whites, we got 50% of the time we pulled a white, right? So that would mean that out of 100 pieces of candy, because that's what's in the bag, 100, we, our guess is that there are 50. Okay, so actually there were 60. That's actually, that's not too far off. That's not too far off. I would have loved to get it a little bit closer with more draws, but that's okay. Now, out of 100 pieces of candy, how many of them were red? We think that probably about 31 of them were red. In reality, 40 were red. So not terribly far off, not terribly far off. Now that leaves green. Green out of 100 pieces of candy, 20 were green. And we got 19. So that one we actually nailed. I would say we nailed that one real close. That's pretty cool. So our numbers are actually fairly close if you look at it, but you can imagine how if you kept drawing, it would get more and more accurate without actually going all the way to 100. Because the point is, this is a sample size. So our sample was 36 out of the 100 total. So the closer we get to 100, of course, the more accurate our number is going to become. Um, sampling is done all the time in um, statistics and in, prob in figuring out probability. And so the, the, um, the larger the sample size, the more accurate your uh, calculation will be on probability, desired outcomes uh, versus total outcomes, how many total outcomes you have. Let me see if there's anything else. So this method of sampling is really useful for estimates about large groups and is used in many different kinds of studies, including science, polling, and surveys, and in production of planning and manufacturing. A sample can give accurate information about a larger group because of the principles of probability. So probability really shows us how this can be true. So super job, and that is week 20.